two valve BMW K bikes K75 and K100s you can see the splines how far the splines <coughs> stick out on the pinion this is a stock rear drive this is a rear drive rebuilt by Bruno you will see the pinion splines stick out considerably farther than the originals do. Comparison here between the two. You can see here that the stock splines ahead of the nut are 25 millimeters. Bruno's are 35, a little over 35. That's a considerable difference, especially when you add in his modified drive shaft, which has a plate welded inside the hollow drive shaft. That plate prevents the grease from creeping up inside the shaft every time the suspension moves. That way, the grease is constantly being forced back onto the splines where they need to be. The biggest wear from these is from lubrication creep. The spline lube works its way up the shaft, leaving this end dry, so that even every time you change the rear tire every 8,000 miles, if you clean and relube these, they still end up dry by the next 8,000 miles frequently, depending on the lubricant you use. I see someone's been in here with the shitty red BMW snot, which doesn't work for shit. That's why we're changing this. So definitely you own one of these. It's a worthwhile investment. You're going to have to rebuild this at some time in the bike's life anyway. You're better off going with the improved rear drive with the longer pinion spline and the improved drive shaft with the grease plate in it. I'm going to explain to you how to change the rear disc on your K75 slash K100. Obviously, if you have a drum rear brake model, this doesn't apply. If you're not sure how to remove this rear drive from your bike, look for my video titled uh, Things to Check Before You Buy a K Bike or Pre Buy for K100, K75, and that will cover it. Uh, I go through how to remove the rear drive from there. This rear disc is held on with these two very, very shallow bolts. Um, they are installed from the factory with Loctite, blue Loctite, a whole shitload of blue Loctite. So much fucking blue Loctite that they, I think they dunked the whole fucking bolt in the bottle and shook it up and then slapped it in quick. There's a lot. You have to get this really hot. Don't freak out. This If the center plug starts to melt, it's plastic. Uh, if Sean wants to grab a pair of pliers or something, we can even pop it out now just to show you it comes out. But it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't do anything. It's kind of a grip it and rip it now in further. It's It's... Yeah, there you go. That's it. It's out. No big deal. That is, uh, you could use this rear drive if you had a five bolt rear wheel and put the center bolt in. Don't need it. It was never necessary. 
Uh, so here we go. Map gas is going to be the key to this whole fucking project. Uh, we need our infrared heat gun. We want these bolts to 260 degrees, 260 Fahrenheit. Which is, uh, what the fuck is that? 110 Celsius? Not like that. Uh, 220 Fahrenheit is 100 degrees Celsius. And we want 260 Fahrenheit. I think we're around 110 Celsius. It's kind of retarded. Everything I use is metric except for fucking temperature. I should practice that more and change that shit. So we're gonna heat the shit out of this fucking thing until it's nice and hot. And I'm not gonna have you sit here and watch this boring ass fucking video while I heat it up. So I'll be back in a moment. I use freeze spray after I'm done heating this. Uh, not so much to shrink the threads of the bolt down. But I use the freeze spray to shrink the bolt head where the socket, the Allen socket, is going to go in. These are very shallow. They round out very, very easily. And while it's not a huge deal if you strip one out because you can drill them, they're a fucking pain in the ass to drill. We're probably getting close now. We hear it going tink, tink, tink. Move down here for a moment. What do we have? 350. 350. Woohoo! I'm happy with that. Let's see what we get out of the bottom here now that everything's nice and hot. We have our. Sean's going to show you the impact driver we're going to use. The six millimeter socket impact hand driver and a hammer with some freaking weight to it. Alright, what do you get on the top now? Three, four. What do we got on the bottom? 360. 360. We're going, going on the bottom first. Yeah, hold that. One of us can do this. Again, let's do... Ah, oh, it's too big, it's a five. Sorry. Mm. Encounter some technical difficulties. Did I say six? I probably did, because I'm a fucking tired fuck. Freeze that motherfucker. It broke the snap on so Ah, fuck. Plan B. After our little fiasco, our broken socket, we had to grind that one a bit shorter, put it back together. What do you got? 317, 310. Works for me. You have to tell me if it turns. I can't see. Nothing. Yep, nope, it's going. Ah, uh, the Allen's going. I don't think the bolt is. Nah, we're fucked on that one. We're gonna be drilling it. Son of a beach. I could 
attempt at the top, freeze it. Maybe why that rounded out on us. I didn't freeze the bottom just now. Something's spinning. No. Nope, that's rounded out as well. All right, in this case, which does happen, if you notice how rusty and shitty these are, you know, we gave it the best, didn't fucking work. We're gonna have to drill the heads off. So, always best to have a spare set of these screws handy if you're not close to a BMW dealer. Um, buy them in advance. They're uh, four or five dollars a piece in 2013 money. It's worth having two. So that's our next step. We're going to waste half an hour drilling the heads of these fuckers off. Back shortly. Well, if you independent guys, if you're doing this job for somebody else, here's a prime example of when you quote somebody for a job, you really need to explain to them, or you really need to know the bike or that model well enough to know what problems you can run into. This is a prime example. This is going to add at least a half an hour to our repair time. If we're lucky, once the heads are drilled off and we knock the rear drive off the disc, we'll be able to just spin the, the remaining part of the bolts out by hand, or at least be able to grab them with a pair of vice grips and spin them out. If it's a situation where the bolt was over torqued or it's really freaking jammed and we need to start drilling in through those bolts to make them hollow and then get in, involved with an extractor, that adds an incredible amount of time. So don't take a bath. If you know, you're quoting somebody a job to replace their rear disc or rear drive on a K75 or a K100 uh, or any BMW model, for, or most BMW models for that matter, most of the oil heads are set up the same way. Um, you need to be prepared and make sure the customer knows that they could be getting into the additional expense of this. Yeah, you're getting there. Okay, mark the bottom. I don't know what these bolts look like, so... Yeah, I'll pull them for you. Go ahead and the bottom. Go ahead and bottom. No, so now we're drilled. These are the remnants of our shitty little fucking bolts. So you see how you drill through the head compared to a new one. Ta -da. Anyway, so now we're disconnected and Sean's gonna grab that rear drive. turn this whole fucking assembly around. Disc is obviously going to stay in place and just give it a little a little tug. Not cooperating. It's not cooperating. Imagine that. What are the odds? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> when in doubt, Get the BFRH, the big fucking rubber hammer. Ta da! Now, don't dip, dip. Puking everywhere. <laughs> Over to the drain bucket with you. Flip that pig upside down so it drains out the speedometer pickup hole. Sounds like a strip bar, doesn't it? The skanky pickup hole. And there's our disc that unfortunately we're going to reuse. You can see it's a little bit scored on the inside. 
it's not really a big deal. Uh, the rear brake on a K bike is at best 10% of your braking. It really doesn't do a whole lot. The drum brake actually worked better. Uh, most of your braking comes from the front. So we're not going to sweat about replacing the <coughs> disc customers into a big chunk of change as it is doing this rear drive and drive shaft and tire at the moment. We have our nice rebuilt longer splined rear drive. Yeah, you get it. That's it. Pretty close on that. That's fucking dead nuts. Where's the screws? Right there. Let me get a T handle. as easy as I thought. I dropped the T-handle behind my toolbox. And I'm too fucking lazy to go fishing for it right now. <coughs> and my fingers are too slimy to turn the damn thing. Hey, there you go. Some shit like that. You know what? Get back out of here. I'm going to do something. Let's put copper anti-seize on these. I know, I know. They have thread locker on them, but I can't say I'm a big fan of the thread locker on these. The fucking disc can't go anywhere. It's held on by the wheel. And if you're worried about the disc falling off while you have the wheel off, then you fucking need to get some medication or something. There. And if you do need a disc, always check with Beam or Boneyard. If you are looking for a used disc, new discs are stupid money from BMW and absolutely not worth buying. There are aftermarket alternatives. Sean brought up a good question. He asked if we were torquing these, and I said no. Um, as I said, the wheel actually holds this disc on. You really don't even need these fucking bolts. The bolts are only there so that when you take the rear wheel off, the disc doesn't fall off too. It wouldn't even be a bad setup if the disc came off too. It would actually make rear wheel removal a little bit easier, It'd give you a little more room, but nonetheless. So, no, we're not going to torque those. We're just going to snug them. And that's it. And again, unless we have the much longer pinion spline, it's an incredible improvement. And. And we're good to go and ready to install this onto the bike after we change the drive shaft. Frankly, I'm going to want to do the case one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we want to take a piece of leather because we are going to remove the drive shaft now. So you take a piece of leather, you take a punch. What you're doing is going through here and catching knuckle of the drive shaft yoke just like that now I probably can't catch this on video we're good to put the camera but I'm gonna give this uh, uh, that's probably too much yeah maybe that'll work keep pressure on this to here and we're gonna give this a good quick sharp wrap And as you see, our drive shaft is ready to come out. We can remove this, such, and now the shaft will come off. Now, the reason we are changing this shaft is because you'll see in a moment how worn out these spline teeth are. <laughs> Yeah, maybe 
maybe a better of the picture. While you are this deep into the bike, this is your gear indicator. Usually on a K bike, they're trouble free. This is your clutch arm boot. Clutch arm accordion boot. Check that for leaks. It's expensive. It's uh, shit, thirty or forty dollars now. Again, 2013 prices. They do dry out. They do rot. They do leak. This one is not leaking. We're gonna leave that one alone. Uh, fairly straightforward to change it unfortunately I can't show you at this point because this one does not need to be replaced so we're not going to mess with it we're not going to mess with rear brake pads because these are fairly fresh and we're reusing the other disc we are replacing the drive shaft oh oh you can see how notchy that fucking new joint is Take that for a spin. <laughs> How's that for shit? It's not sloppy. It's, got a nice it's just it. got a nice fucking detent in it. There you go. Yeah. It's not moving. Yeah. I'll take a new one. All right. Here's what I'm talking about. You can tell here how notchy that is. This one. Moves nicely side to side, no problems. If you could see down here, and I'll take pictures, this shaft is hollow. So here's some photos. When you get a replacement shaft and rear drive from Bruno, it's going to send you a little, uh, a little tub of Molly grease. This is very similar to Honda Molly, and again, I don't support using this shit on your clutch splines. I absolutely do support using it on drive shaft splines. I find this stuff just a little too thin. For clutch hub splines and if you're real careful it's okay but people tend to go freaking nutty and just put too much shit on it so Sean's gonna hit hit our output shaft splines give those a good coat we're gonna put this drive shaft back in locked into place I also want to point out the factory u-joints are staked this is a non BMW claims this is a non-serviceable drive shaft. When you need a U-joint, fuck you, go buy a new shaft. $700, whatever they are. Bruno rebuilds these with clips, so you can replace the U-joint. Very nice improvement. I had to change cameras, the other one, the uh, battery's toast. So, we've documented our mileage on this drive shaft. Sean has already lubricated those splines. We're going to slide this shaft into place. He's busy coating the front edge of the rubber boot with our molly grease it creates a little bit better seal and here we're getting the shaft on now you'll see it doesn't stay you need to whack the fucker in the end there you go now you can't pull it off you're gonna do the same thing with the swing arm so if you want to slide that swing arm up there now
what you do with this is once you get it into position you push it forward now if you pull it back I mean you're not going to grip it and rip it but you're going to be able to rock it back and forth it's going to stop that's the accordion boot going through its full range of motion so you had a good seal if you could slide this all the way off again then the fucking boot didn't seat properly and you gotta fiddle fuck around and get it into position and give it another smack now this pin these pins we're going to coat the surfaces of these with this molly lube assembly lube etc and uh, then we can install them. Just a coat on this surface here, which runs into the bearing, and this which runs into the transmission housing. Sorry. Transmission housing rides here. In the race of the swing arm bearing rides there. Now, we lift this up. We're going to move the swing arm into position. I can't do that right now. Maybe I can. Yeah, some shit like that. Or not. Take care of this pin, which is going on the other side. And I've said it before, but if you're new to my videos, no fucking Loctite on these. BMW put them on at the factory, put Loctite on them at the factory. You do not use them anymore. No Loctite on those. You can grease it. You can put copper anti-seize on it. You can put engine assembly lube, this molly based shit on it. That's fine. No fucking Loctite, please. fucker needed a little attitude adjustment there. So that's there. You have three gold colored screws that go into this, this is five or six. pin. Uh, the center pin on your side yep. is a six. These are fives. These have an incredibly low torque of eight seven or eight newton meters I think it's eight to ten yeah let's make it eight eight newton meters is virtually nothing so if you do not have a torque wrench small enough to go down to eight it's good an idea so. That's it. So you got what? 30 degrees? 30 degrees of movement. Once it stops. Oh, almost 45. We'll call it 40. Or we'll call it buy a fucking torque wrench. Unlike the later bikes with the paralevers, this pin is set a little bit different. I am adamant about explaining to people that on a paralever you need to torque the center pin to 10 newton meters. This one is different. This one gets torqued to 8 newton meters max. 7 to 8. And now we have an issue of, you see the nut is running against the transmission. We have to move that nut back further. So we get a little more work to do to free this up. The punchiness has set in. Um, all you need to do to free up this pin is, do you want to lift that? Lift the wrench. And that's all, now it's free. So now you can take the wrench off we just wanted to back that nut out 
enough so that I can torque the center pin to the proper setting, which is here, 8 newton meters. Now comes the semi-complicated part. Now you have to tighten this nut to 40, 40. 40 newton meters, but you can't, you don't want to turn the center because that would make the center pin tighter, which would put more pressure on the swing arm. So you have to take a shitty socket, like a Sears Craftsman, grind a big freaking chunk out of it, as we have, set your torque wrench to 40, get in here with an Allen wrench to hold the center like we are doing. Bad position for me to start at, fucking asshole. There you go. And we're going to go round and round a few freaking times. Until we get to the point we need to freaking be at. Okay. It's starting to get some tension now. Okay. And that's good. Now this pin is properly torqued. Our next step, well, if you're doing this yourself, your next step could be either installation of the foot peg plates, or if you want a little more room, you can put the new rear drive on, or your old rear drive, or whatever you're doing. We're going to use a lot of this Molly Lube. Pack it in here good on the splines. We want plenty in there. Can't go anywhere. And that's good. I need mean, three big brushfuls. You can inspect this, obviously, well, you should inspect it. The next time you change the tire, take the rear wheel off again. So since we're putting a new tire on now, 8,000 miles later, this will be back for another rear tire. I am going to remove the rear drive again for the customer, and we will inspect and see how much lube is left. And then we can adjust how much we put in from there. Do I need to fucking... No. So you have the rear drive. This one does not get indexed, phased, or any of that. You're just going to line up the rear drive splines and slide her on home. There's nothing in between the swing arm and the rear face of the rear drive in the pinion area. That's it. You're going to use these bolts with copper anti-seize on them, which is not here right now. I'll go get that. And as you see, the shop is a fucking disaster from this fucking lingering K1200 LT project. It's just mind-boggling. Hopefully tomorrow that thing will be back together and on the road. But today, today we had a bunch of little jobs to do, this being one of them. So you're going to screw all four of these swing arm to rear drive screws in. You are going to shit, lift that rear drive up. There we go. Whackety whack whack. That'll go with a little love tap. There you go. That's much easier than holding it. You're going to put a little bit of copper schmuck on the end there. This needs to go on the other side over to here. And we're going to sip that fucker off in a second as soon as I get my cutters. And we are pretty much almost done. I'll point out a few things that you do not want to forget at this stage, and then we'll leave it, because you really don't need to see how to put the fucking rear tire on and shit. Don't forget to fill the rear drive. If you're buying a rear drive, 
used from elsewhere or a rebuilt one, always remove the drain plug and retorque it. Put a new crush seal on it if it looks like shit. Remove the fill plug. This rear drive takes 260 cc's. I use synthetic 75W140 GL5 lube. You can use whatever freaking weight you want, but it needs to be GL5 approved, not GL1 lube. Um, this little screw holds that in, does not get torqued to virtually anything. Four, I think, four Newton meters. Uh, this shock bolt is going to be 45 shock nut sorry 45 newton meters your caliper bolts are 30 newton meters your four rear wheel studs these get torqued to 105 newton meters your foot peg plates are going to be 18 newton meters three bolts each these are kind of irrelevant here and again here 18 newton meters 18 18 make sure you get the ground if you have an abs equipped bike ground needs to go under the foot peg plate and i don't think there's anything else i can show you so i'm not going to waste the time screwing around wasting another fucking 10 minutes of putting this the rest of this back together uh new tire balanced ready to go and you need the caliper up in the air like asshole up in the air like such when you slide the wheel in be careful you don't drag the rim against the sharp edges of the abs ring gear it's not really a gear it's a sensor uh that's that's all i got for you so it's an easy enough job to do. Like I said, the biggest difficulty we ran into here was the issue of the seized, fucked up brake disc bolts. Fortunately, we were able to drill those out and move along. And overall, fuck did we start on this? 4.30? With interruptions. 4.30. 5.30, 6.30, Let's, we got another half an hour at most to finish this. Um, we're going to have three hours into this. It can normally go quicker, but like I said, filming it takes a little bit longer, and we did run into some difficulties. So don't be, if you own one of these, don't be hesitant to do this on your own. Just be prepared, have a few tools ready, and go from there. If you run into a jam, as always, you can email me, and I'm happy to help as much as I can via email. Thanks.